सो हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू दिस न्यू वीडियो सो इन माय प्रीवियस वीडियो आई हैड डिस्कस्ड विद वन इंपॉर्टेंट टाइप ऑफ सर्किट दैट इज सीडो एंड मॉस लॉजिक सो इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू कंटिन्यू विद डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ लॉजिक सर्किट्स अंडर दैट वी हैव वन मोर इंपॉर्टेंट टाइप ऑफ सर्किट दैट इज कॉल्ड एज डायनामिक सीमॉस लॉजिक ओके सो दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट डायनामिक सीमॉस लॉजिक वी हैव some additional circuits under this uh, dyna dynamic cmos logic which we are going to discuss in detail okay so the dynamic cmos logic is a logic family that reduces the transistor count while achieving high speed operation okay here also the same thing the, the transistor count is reduced if you compare it with the complementary cmos uh, uh, general cmos complementary circuit that the transistor count is reduced okay and uh, due to that reduced transistor count it would be achieving the high speed operation unlike static static cmos logic which maintains a stable output using both pull up and pull down networks this dynamic cmos logic relies on clocked operation okay and charge storage principle the clock clock operation would be very very essential in this dynamic cmos some of the main features of uh, dynamic cmos logic are it uses clock driven precharge and evaluation phases we have two important phases under the dynamic cmos logic that is precharge and evaluate it reduces transistor count leading to increased logic density next we have it offers higher speed compared to static cmos due to reduced capacitance and it requires careful clock synchronization to avoid errors okay so these are some of the main features under dynamic cmos logic okay so structure and working of uh, dynamic cmos gate you see here so this is the basic structure guys of uh, dynamic cmos okay so if you see the structure carefully here first uh, just below the vdd we have one precharged transistor so that is basically the pmos transistor that is called as precharged transistor and just above the ground we have the evaluate transistor okay so that transistor is nmos transistor okay in between these two precharged and evaluate transistor in between we have the n mos logic transistor okay so this is the basic block here out of the dynamic cmos okay where we have the precharged transistor that is the pmos and the evaluate state transistor that is the n mos and uh, just uh, below the pmos transistor we would be checking the output and below that the n logic block that is the n mos transistor block uh, design has to be drawn okay so this is the example the same example they have considered again ab ab plus c into d plus e for that again you see here this is the complete nmos logic drawn between the output and the nmos transistor and the precharge and evaluate transistor are drawn and uh, the gates of the both the both of them are shorted and one common input that is five five is taken between the precharge and evaluate transistor in this case if you observe carefully for n inputs that is five inputs we are using n plus two transistors that is one is in the precharge and one is in the evaluate state so totally seven transistors are used in case of dynamic cmos okay so this is the complete structure guys of uh, dynamic cmos just note it down so again it consists of an nmos logic network which is responsible for evaluating the logic function and a pmos precharged transistor which en which charges the output to vdd and uh, during the precharge phase okay so these are the Uh, uh, functions of the nmos and pmos uh, precharge and evaluate transistor in this dynamic cmos and nmos evaluation transistor which selectively discharges the output during evaluation a clock signal phi that is uh, this is the clock signal here it controls the switching between the precharge and evaluation phases okay so now let us see the operation operating phases of uh, the dynamic cmos in detail that is one is precharge and evaluate okay the dynamic cmos gate operates in two main phases that is precharge and evaluate first precharge phase in precharge phase the pmos precharged transistor turns on okay that is uh, this pmos transistor would be turning on and this nmos would be turned off okay charging the output node to vdd the output would be charged directly to vdd the nmos evaluation transistor is off preventing any discharging which is happening okay so that's why the precharge phase is controlled the output is temporarily set to high regardless to any of the input values the output is always high because we in the precharge state phi is equal to 0 and the transistor is turning on okay so this is about precharge next we have one more phase that is called as evaluation phase 
in evaluation phase phi that is the clock signal is one okay in this the pre pmos precharged transistor is off that is the precharged transistor is off and nmos evaluate transistor is on okay nmos evaluation transistor is on allowing the nmos logic block to evaluate the function that is in the precharged state this nmos logic won't be having any uh, won't be having any consideration but uh, when the evaluate stage is on then the nmos block that is this nmos logical block would be activated and the functioning would be taking place and we are direct the output is directly fetched to the output side whereas in case of precharged state since this transistor is on so output is directly fetched towards the vdd okay if the input logic network forms a conducting path to ground the output discharges to low if no conducting path exists the output remains as it is in the precharge high state this approach reduces the number of transistors needed since a pull up network is not required okay the limitations and challenges although dynamic cmos logic provides higher speed and reduced area it has several limitations and challenges first is charge leakage and charge sharing so this is one of the important drawback here the output node holds charge dynamically without any steady pull up over time leakage currents can reduce the output voltage which causes the incorrect logic levels since the output voltage would be reduced since due to the lesser number of transistors the logic levels won't be having a constant value it would be continuously toggling uh, and we don't we, we would not get any appropriate signals okay charge sharing between nodes can alter the uh, stored charge leading to unstable output next we have input switching restriction inputs must only charge during the precharge phase if inputs change during the evaluation the charge redistribution effects may corrupt the output next is cascading issue uh, dynamic cmos gates cannot be directly cascaded using a single phase clock the cascading issue we have this is one of the strongest limitation for dynamic cmos logic the first gate must evaluate before the next stage begins evaluation causing timing constraints okay so this is that cascading condition so you see here this is not possible because uh, we won't be getting a constant waveform zero and one because if we have the cascading problem the inputs of the uh, pmos and nmos transistors are uh, given interconnectedly and since we have two n logics in picture so that's why the output won't be uh, in the uh, precharge or evaluation state it would be continuously flowing in both the states which is not possible so that's why the cascading problem is uh, a very very uh, essential limitation for the dynamic cmos okay if, in case if they ask the cascading problem we should be drawing the circuit like this first draw the complete uh, uh, dynamic cmos structure okay after that you draw one uh, extra pmos and one more dynamic cmos structure and uh, uh, sh short the uh, uh, the body terminal of the gate should be given to the next input gate and here also the nmos transistor body should be given to the next uh, gate input as for the nmos and we have two n logics in between okay so this is the cascading problem and this stage we have uh, where the overlapping takes place that stage is called as erroneous state okay where we have signal flow between both 0 and 1 simultaneously which is not possible okay so this is the problem for cascaded dynamic cmos now under dynamic cmos again we have two important phases that is multi phase clocking strategies okay under that we have two important phases for dynamic cmos that is one is four phase dynamic logic and another one is two phase dynamic logic okay so there, let us discuss one by one that what are the four phase and two phase dynamic logic first is four phase the four phase dynamic logic approach introduces a structured clocking sequence that ensures that outputs are properly evaluated and stored before being used as inputs in the next stage okay so this is one main drawback of the four phase that is the structured clocking sequence is taking place which consists of four phases that ensures that outputs are properly evaluated in each phase so that the flow of signal would be very very uh, uh, in a sequential manner and the uh, output would be in the correct way based on the inputs provided okay so this is the four phase dy uh, four phase dynamic logic circuits you see here we it has four phases this is the timing diagram it has four phases phi 1 phi 2 phi 3 and phi 4 in each phase you see here in phi 1 uh, in the first phi 1 stage for some in, for some time the output is 1 then it is a constant 0 for phi 2 you see here first it is 0 then it becomes 1 for phi 3 uh, uh, leaving the first two phi 1 and phi 2 stages 
it would be uh, having some delay and after that again it is 1 for 5 4 again leaving the first three stages 5 1 5 2 5 3 after some delay it is 1 okay so this goes on so now here for 5 1 2 for 5 1 2 5 2 3 5 3 4 and 5 4 1 it consists two stages at a time that is 5 1 and 5 2 so it's, uh, since 5 1 and 5 2 are 1 at the first two time intervals so that's why 5 1 2 would be 1 and uh, similarly for 5 2 3 it consists 5 2 and 5 3 so uh, see here 5 2 and 5 3 uh, in this stage the 5 2 3 would be 1 okay then for 5 3 4 again the same thing 5 3 and 5 4 between these two uh, it is 1 so it would be logic high for, uh, between those two stages only then for 5 4 and 5 1 you see here 5 4 1 that is uh, between these two stages the output would be 1 so this is the sequential flow and this is called as four phase dynamic logic so this is the circuit diagram of this four phase dynamic logic where it consists of you see here in the first this part is the complete dynamic cmos logic structure okay and here if you see at the output side we are adding one transmission gate okay in order to in order for it to become a four phase dynamic logic one transmission gate is added at the output end so this is the complete uh, diagram of the four phase dynamic logic where we have one dynamic cmos and at the output end you are adding one transmission gate with the inputs the gate inputs as 5 bar 2 3 and 5 2 3 okay so this constant input clock signal is called as 5 1 2 bar and this is the complete structure of the four phase dynamic logic the working principle it consists of uh, this logic consists of uh, uh, it consists of phase 1, phase 2, phase 3, phase 4, okay, where we have different names for this phase. Phase 5 1 is called as precharge of PZ. During this phase, the node PZ is precharged to PDD, okay, so this is the node PZ and it gets precharged to VDD while node Z re uh, remains at its pre previous value, okay. Whereas phase 5 2 is called as precharge of Z, that is, precharge of node PZ is maintained. And the transition transmission gate turns on allowing the node z to also pre-charge okay so this is the uh, use where transmission gate would be appearing in case of uh, phi 2 phase next phase phi 3 so the phase phi 3 is called as evaluation phase the gate evaluates and if the pull down network is activated the node pz discharges conditionally okay next we have phase phi 4 that is the hold phase the node z is held in its evaluated state ensuring that it does not change uh, prematurely okay so these are the working principles of all the phases which I have done. So these are the advantages of four phase dynamic logic. It reduces charge sharing issues by ensuring proper storage of values. Then it enables cascading of multiple logic stages without a risk of premature discharge. So under this four phase dynamic logic, the cascading problem is solved. Next, it ensures that the evaluated values remains stable during the computation. Okay. So these are some of the advantages and limitations are it requires four separate clock signals, increasing the circuit complexity. Additional clocking transistors increase the power consumption. Strict timing requirements must be met for reliable operation. Okay, so these are the limitations of four phase dynamic logic. So now let's discuss one more kind that is called as two phase dynamic logic. Okay. An alternative to four phase logic is a two phase approach which simplifies the clocking at the cost of slightly reduced reliability okay so in order to reduce the uh, clocking pulses since uh, if you take four phases at a time the clocking uh, uh, complexity would be very very high but if you take the two phase logic at a time uh, the co clocking complexity would be very low okay so there is one slight change here in the two phase in the circuit you see here if you observe here in the output side we don't have any transmission gate attached okay so uh, other than that the two phase consists of the pmos and the nmos that is the dynamic uh, circuit here but just below the output we have one more nmos okay that is the second input for the uh, two phase dynamic logic already we have one one clock input this is one clock signal and uh, with this nmos gate terminal we have one more clock signal and that is called as 512 and this is one clock signal that is called as 51 okay so the, the, this these are the changes for the two phase dynamic logic circuit okay so these are the timing diagrams for 5.1 and 5.1.2 uh, based on the uh, given uh, dynamic logic. So the in the dynamic two-phase logic, the one difference in the timing is the out the two and the two inputs are 
vary, varied with each other that is if this is one this if this is logic high the other input would be definitely logic low because the transistor characteristics are obtained in such a way you see here with this timing diagram it would be very very uh, clear to you all see when this is one this is zero and when this is zero this part is one okay so this was about two phase dynamic logic the working principle a two phase logic scheme utilizes alternating clock cycles okay so the alternating clock cycles are 5a and 5b certain gates evaluate their logic function in 5a and under 5b other gates evaluate while the outputs of the previous phase are held constant okay the previous phase outputs you see here are held constant advantages it reduces the number of required clock signals from 4 to 2 okay that is one advantage that is the clock signals are reduced simpler circuit design and reduced power consumption limitations more susceptible uh, to charge leakage compared to four phase logic it requires careful synchronization to prevent timing mismatches okay so these are some of the advantages and uh, limitations and this is one uh, uh, comparison of two phase and four phase logic you see here clock signals four that is five one five two five three five four in phase of uh, four phase and for two phase it is two stability higher due to cold phases since it has cold phase so stability is high in case of four phase in case of two phase the stability is moderate that is uh, the charge leakage is very uh, very high circuit complexity it is very high it is low power consumption is high in case of four phase and in case of two phase it is low Such, uh, suitability for cascading it is more suitable uh, where in, in case of uh, two phase it requires careful synchronization okay next is transistor count as I've told you, for dynamic CMOS, the CMOS gate, it requires N plus 2 transistors. Okay, so that's the mentioned it here. The reduced transistor count results in lower capacitance and higher speed. Advantages of uh, dynamic CMOS, that is high speed, low power consumption and reduced area. Disadvantages of dynamic CMOS, charge leakage, timing constraints and complex cascade. Okay, so this is the conclusion here. Uh, it is a powerful alternative to static CMOS for high speed low power digital circuits okay however its reliance on clock driven operation introduces challenges such as charge leakage and complex timing synchronization okay so these are the factors which you need to be knowing for under dynamic cmos okay so this was all about the complete dynamic cmos logic okay so i i know that this video has become lengthier but uh, uh, this is very very essential so that's why i thought to do it in a single video okay so that's all for the video guys like share subscribe to our channel keep supporting and uh, in the upcoming videos, we are going to see with some other circuits. Okay. So that's all guys. Thank you.